Okay, part three of our journey across Crete. Watch the previous two to get all caught up. We've been keeping these episodes to a manageable length by breaking it up between the places we were staying, and even more conveniently, this means we get to divide the four episodes between the four prefectures of Crete. So, Ias Nikolaos is the regional capital of the Lasiti prefecture on the eastern end of the island. But, uh, okay, to, to be clear, there is nothing at all unpleasant about Ias Nikolaos. This small inland lake is easily the focal point and a place we caught a quick drink on our way. But unlike the other three capitals of the regions we were staying in, Ias Nikolaos doesn't really have much history. Uh, by the way, if that name sounds familiar, Ias Nikolaos, which just means Saint Nicholas, well, you know how many English pubs we have named like the Royal Oak or the White Horse? Well, same sort of principle applies to Greek towns named Ias Nikolaos. I mean, our ferry pulled into an Ias Nikolaos on the Zakynthos episode. This is the disambiguations page on Wikipedia. There's going to be a lot more than these. So rather than stay there, I mean, fine though that would have been, I wanted to park up at a place we'd seen ever so briefly on our 2017 visit. I must admit, I had remembered Alunda all wrong. I recalled it as an entire hillside carpeted with like a thousand holiday apartments, but in fact it's comparatively small, although there are various resorts stretched out over the hills for several miles in either direction. Now this could be just another resort town amongst many, many on the Cretan coast, but Elunda has a couple of things to make it particularly stand out. Now, there was occupation here in antiquity, but there's little of that to see now. Seismic activity has had most of it collapsing into the sea over the centuries, but just within sight of the shore, there is a small islet. Okay, and this is going to require a small history lesson. Uh, last time we briefly name-dropped the 21-year siege of Candia, that's modern-day Heraklion. Well, after the Ottomans finally took control of the city in 1669, it spelled the end of Venetian rule on Crete, except for three tiny island holdouts, Granvosa and Suda in the west, and Spinalonga in the east. And it's Spinalonga which draws hundreds of thousands of tourists in this direction. We originally saw this in 2017 as an excursion day, and that's fine. I mean, it normally gets paired with a beach on the far side of Caledon, uh, and that's not a bad option if you weren't planning on staying much further east than Heraklion. But it was nice to be in the area and taking time for ourselves. We arranged a boat in advance, though to be honest, just as many people had said online, there is a large number of boats moored in Alunda going there, so if you wanted to just turn up, I mean, no promises, but in all but the busiest season, that would probably work just fine. About a tenner each, there is an additional cost to enter the fortress when you land. So, boated over. Knowing what it was this time, and with a much greater knowledge of the Venetian Republic and Venetian architecture in general, I was able to appreciate it a lot more this time. I, I remember last time not being quite sure what to make of it. I mean, in the baking heat and with all the crumbling buildings, it did have something of a Wild West feel. Now, the downside to the excursion last time, we had a tour guide for the fortress. Not usually the way we roll, but she just took forever talking about the leper colonies on the island and by the time we realized we really should just excuse ourselves and slip away to see the island just us we were almost out of time <laughs> her voice did have a striking similarity to eartha kitt's character in the film version of holes so i was worried that if we left the tour group we would be cast for always and eternity so yeah allow a fair amount of time to get around the island we definitely appreciated not having a tour guide talking about lepers for 40 minutes it's both not huge, but there's also a lot to see, and you need time to get to the top of the island, as well as going down a couple of trails that will inevitably go nowhere, and you'll have to double back. It was a scorching day, and even the still omnipresent winds from earlier in the week weren't doing much to take the edge off. I was going to park up in any part of shade I could find in this cafe by the jetty, but when I went into the cafe and asked for a Coke, passed the girl a five euro note only for her to take it, then close the till, and look at me blankly. I held her gaze, expecting her to realize that she hadn't given me change, but then she pointed to the price list with five euro cans of Coke. And I, I really don't like to seem petty, so had it been just a little less, I would have just scowled and accepted it. But out of sheer amazement that a place would have the gall to price gouge this hard, I handed the unopened can back and asked for my money and I just let my bone-dry tongue stick to the roof of my mouth. So look, take plenty of drinks, kids. The boat took a long time to swing back around, but after getting back to the shore, we finally got a drink. 
Yeah, not just this. I, I know it won't slake my thirst. <laughs> you guys sound like my dad. We were finally able to dump our things at the Airbnb, which was very reasonable considering it was just 20 strides from the water. Perhaps surprisingly, Alunda is not pricey. We could have gone even cheaper than we did. After a brief dip, we picked a random, comparatively inexpensive place to have dinner, and this was fine. Uh, though considering the view, I'd have just as happily had a dry digestive biscuit for dinner if only to sit there and enjoy the place. You know, the more I've been writing scripts, the more I'm finding the phrase we were pretty tired popping up, and this feels like too much of an admission of defeat without context, so please consider. This was the same day that we got up at 6am, took an entire lap of the Heraklion walls on foot, drove to Gornia and Vasiliki before doubling back for a drink in Ias Nikolaus, boat to spin a longer lap up and down there and a quick swim. So please appreciate it when I say we were not being idle on this trip by getting a slightly earlier night. And not to be outdone, before turning in I did grab a Fredo espresso from this place. I'm grateful they were prepared to make an exception in my case for the beautiful people entry requirement. Out of bed early next morning, though I didn't set an alarm for the very first raise, as the terrain around makes sure the morning sun won't appear for a little while. Took a walk around a near deserted Alunda, low angle flag shot. I came to a realization. This was, as best I could tell, the first time we'd ever stayed in a resort town. Basically everywhere else we've ever been tends to be a historic town that also happens to be a popular tourist spot, but it was unusual for us to be in a town that didn't really exist for its own sake, rather kind of just for the tastes of visitors and little else. It was a slightly uncomfortable realisation. I, I don't know if there's much of a local population here who isn't directly employed in the tourist facing industries of the town. As I mentioned, it's not a big place and almost everywhere seems to be taken up with tourist apartments and hotels. Still, undeniably a lovely spot to be perched, even if it's a bit uncomfortable being in a place that doesn't really exist for the benefit of its residents. After a quick espresso and then another Fredo, we eventually got going. Just a quick look across the causeway to see the windmills and what is apparently a popular diving spot to see the ruins of Olus, uh, though with the clear waters, not much was really apparent. So this day we headed continually east and since I'm saving a lot of the content here for future episodes on the Venetians, Minoans, vegetarians, I'll just summarise. I kind of glossed over this in the intro but before we actually arrived in Alunda we overshot a bit to see Gornia. This is a really stunning Minoan site to catch. Remarkably intact settlement plan and generally just a beautiful site, especially seeing the site with much more of a natural backdrop, well, mostly at least. Back to day two, we were hoping to see the island of Moklos. It's a small islet with a Minoan settlement clearly visible, but the cafe that normally runs a boat over wasn't running it, so we had to make do with just the shoreline views, which, you know, was still pretty great. Winding down a very snaky highway that dipped back and forth for close to an hour, we proceeded to Sitia. This is a town pretty close to the eastern tip of the island, we wanted to see the Venetian fortress particularly, but it was closed, so what can you do? Petras was also closed, not a particularly great ratio that day. I mean, Sitia is pretty nice, but I wouldn't call it a highlight exactly. If you haven't got something you specifically want to see at this end of the island, there isn't much incentive for you to head this far. An unfilmed story that eventually turned out okay, but I'll have to just use other footage to fill it in. In an attempt to avoid the gridlock of Sitia, we wound up taking the rental car on what would eventually barely even qualify as a footpath with no branching alternative routes and a couple of slopes so steep we were genuinely worried we may never make it out of the valley. Like seriously, be very wary of what Google will qualify as a road in Greece. All of this stuff here, don't even try it. In fact, just avoid the rural routes in Crete in general if you've got a hire car and it's not like a monster truck. But the treat for an otherwise slightly disappointing day, many bends in the very bendy road later and we stopped here. It's just a roadside cafe. The coffee was fine, food not the best, but the views facing west across the north coast of the island, ah, unbelievable. The Hornets, or well, I'm pretty sure they were Hornets, also made this for a fun lunchtime game of try not to freak out and they were a lot bigger than they look in this shot. Back to Alunda and took shelter from the heat, took a breather in the last part of the afternoon, dinner, this place was pretty great. Still incredulous that the free watermelon takes none of the edge off the free Reiki. I mean, I'd happily ingest both, but you'll still be pulling a face. Final morning, got up a little bit earlier and that's us leaving Alunda, but 
one more thing before we wrap up this episode. Geographically, this really belongs in the Heraklion episode, but chronologically, this is where we went next. Malia is a bit of a funny place. I distinctly recall that on our 2017 excursion day to Spinalonga, as we passed through Malia, I was gobsmacked just how many quad bike rentals you could fit into one town. And yeah, Malia has a rep of only really requiring a primary school reading level. It's mainly just parking Brits in front of sports and trying to keep them distracted long enough to prevent them from getting out and ruining the islands for everyone else. But the Minoan palatial ruins are worth seeing. They're actually in slightly better condition than the rest of the town, which is a bit of a wreck. But with that, we're heading back west. And before getting to Harnia, we had set aside just a couple of days to see Rithimno. And this was perhaps the biggest question mark left from 2017. It's one thing getting to see the little sites here and there, but this is a whole historic city perched on the edge of the coast, pretty much halfway between Harnia and Heraklion, which we'd only just glimpsed when we were here last. So next episode, we'll be exploring that. Meanwhile, we've been trying to cut down the amount of time it takes to make these episodes, and the most obvious way was to reduce the number of tracks we record for these, because they really do take a long time. So we didn't make a track specifically for Alunda, but you can catch the other Creek tracks and all the soundtrack you've been hearing behind this video on bandcamp.com. If you want to support the channel, that's the place to do it. Otherwise, we'll catch you guys for episode four.